the Holy Spirit last week um the the topic was on obedience obedience y'all obedience we I don't think we could ever be reminded of, the, of this uh, enough because every day brings something new new challenges new emotions new circumstances okay it brings new things and we also every single day have a choice to make let's pretend this is a key okay get your imaginary key out or if you have some keys with you go ahead pull them out <laughs> but get your key okay this right here this let's pretend this is obedience okay and I'm just briefly sharing this to get to where we're going um, this is a key and so this right here it's going to unlock everything else so we can't go forward until we get the basic we've got to obey we've got to obey if we truly are desperate to hear the voice of the Lord we've got to obey but here's the problem we don't open up the Word of God and we don't seek after him um, we're looking for a word from everybody else we're looking for a preacher. We turn, hey, listen, when I'm cleaning the house and stuff, I turn on some podcasts and YouTube. Well, when I say podcasts, I really, I'm old school, so I still turn on YouTube. Um, but I watch videos. But anyway, and I, I love all of that. I love anything that's going to help me grow. Anything that's going to step on my toes and, and speak into my life that's going to help me grow. You know, I, I haven't, I don't even know the last time I watched TV. I'm not telling you TV's wrong, okay? I'm not here to tell you all this stuff. But lately, I've been very selective what I have allowed in my life because I'm on a pursuit to hear the voice of God, okay? I'm not telling you I'm not going to watch a movie every once in a while. I'm not telling you I ain't going to go and whatever, do, do, do. But, but I am on a diligent pursuit right now, and I'm hungry to hear His voice. And so, we have got to pursue Him. We've got to open up the word and stop relying on everybody else. We need to stop relying on social media to be the very uh, primary thing. I mean, people can be used by God on, online, absolutely. But we have to stop depending on everything except for his word. You know, we have to stop depending on people that we look up to. Because I was sharing with the church tonight. There was a situation I was in. And it, it about choked the life out of me. It about destroyed me. It frustrated my purpose. It, um, it about, I mean, it, it literally knocked the wind out of me. And I laid there lifeless um, in a situation I was in. And, and I, I remember laying there lifeless. I'm not going into it all like I did tonight at church. But I laid there lifeless and I begged God to take me on home. That's how bad the situation was. I mean, it was, it literally, Satan, I was a Christian, and I was even filled with the Holy Ghost, and I, I mean, I, his spirit, and he moved in my life so greatly, but I was in a season that I had allowed myself to be deceived. Satan came as an angel of light, and so I was in this situation, and I begged him to take me out, and see, there was somebody involved, kind of a, 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 a part of this situation, um, to the side a little bit, um, who I looked up to greatly, a, a man of God. And I thought this person with this credibility, the person that I had seen preach to, to thousands and, and, and to, um, you know, just, just God used them to speak even over my life and read my, my mail, you know, and uh, prophesying and, and just, you know, all kinds of things, um, casting out demons, all these things. And I looked up to this person so much and I trusted they knew this other person involved in the situation. So I trusted that I was okay. I trusted it's nothing on this other person's part, the preacher, the man of God. It's nothing on him. But I trusted so much in him his discernment that I was totally blinded and it about took me out. So that, that man of God in that situation, I mean, I was thinking, you know, it, it wasn't until after everything blew up in my face and after I begged God to take me on home, uh, you know, after I was lifeless and, and depressed and I didn't, I didn't trust anybody in my life. And I questioned how 
How did that man of God not pick up on this? Satan about destroyed me. How did he not? How did, why didn't he warn me? But I'm telling you, I learned even through that situation. I sing a song. It's been a while since I sang it. But I sing a song sometimes, and you all have probably heard it. It became my theme after this situation. I would sing, Jesus rescues me, because in that situation, Jesus, I, I say it all the time. When Well, when I used to talk about this, I would say it all the time. Jesus himself rescued me out of that situation. And so I still... I still listen to that man of God, by the way. I still have confidence in him. But it taught me no matter the credibility that is there, no matter how powerful they really, I mean, they it doesn't mean he's not a powerful man of God, like, you know, used mightily by the Lord and the Spirit of God working through him. But there were so many red flags. There were so many alarms going off, but also... I truly, I know this to be true. Satan came as an angel of light in my life during that time. And he was pulling on areas in my life that I was desperate to have. I wanted it so bad. And and so I want to say, because this is part of the study, but I mean, we're talking about the discerning the voice of God, right? And we must, we must be careful. Because, I mean, you know, the Lord, he's out, he does, he loves us and he wants to protect us and to, to guide us and all those things. But when we are seeking certain things, we desire it so much. Oh gosh, we can get in a very dangerous place. Oh God. Oh Jesus. We, we've got... We have got to be led by him because it'll get us into trouble. Um, I am just, I, I, I'm just, tonight, I, I never planned to even talk about that situation, even at church earlier, but I am, I'm so grateful that Jesus rescues us. And he is a teacher. The spirit will lead us and guide us and to teach us. He will lead us into all truth. There should be no confusion. He is not the author of confusion. The Lord is not the author of confusion. Okay? He will lead us into all truth. Okay? And so, um, let me flip over to something here. Um, yeah, so, this, this leads me. I, I'm, I'm not probably going to go in order. I'm just, I'm just trying to be led by the Spirit of God. <laughs> but, John chapter 16, verse 7. So it's the Gospel of John. Um, and if you're not familiar, it's, it's totally okay. Um, we all we all have to learn, okay? Don't you dare make let anybody make you feel stupid or that you're not, you know, where you should be, okay? We all have to learn. And, uh, but it says here, John chapter 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I'll tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Okay. So right there, Jesus, okay, was speaking. Can you imagine living in the day that Jesus was up on this earth walking? Been able to walk and talk with him. You know, and for many, that still wasn't good enough. But, um, but I, my thought with this was thank the good Lord that he will so many things about what he did, but thank the Lord that he did rise again and he, he didn't stay because he, he went away and now he sent his spirit to abide. He abides, he abides, hallelujah, he abides with me. I just, I'm so thankful that he abides with us every single day. He, 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 the Spirit of God doesn't have to depart from us, okay? Just, let's see, in the, in the Old Testament, this is what I really want to bring out, is that in the Old Testament, um, where you at? Come, 
I'm gonna find you. Where are you at? So, um, in the Old Testament, there were uh, different, the, the Spirit of God didn't dwell with them. Um, what I liked, let me read, yeah, here it is. The, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was only given to specific people. This is Old Testament, okay? Before Jesus was up on this earth and all that stuff. Um, the Holy Spirit was only given to specific people for a specific period of time in order to achieve specific tasks. This is also known as selective indwelling. Old Testament followers of God needed external means as the primary method of hearing Him. So prophets, visions, and such, because they didn't have continuous access to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Ooh, that makes me excited though because we, you and I today, have the privilege, the opportunity for His 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 Spirit to continually abide with us. Not just a little bit, not just a little portion, even though sometimes we walk and talk like we only have a little bit. Okay? But He um, it is his desire to dwell inside of us. And you know, when we become Christians, his spirit does come inside of us. We're, we're not only, as she says in her book here, it was a good uh, outlook on it, but um, we're not only uh, changed, but we're exchanged. We, we're transformed. We're, the, the old has become new, okay? Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Um, so, and, and, um, so I'm just going to read some things here and there. Uh one thing she says, too, I thought this was a good point. Many times we feel like the Lord is playing hide and seek with us. Like, Lord, why? Why why can't I find you? Why are you, um, you know, why are you making it so hard? God, will you just show yourself to me? Okay, so I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I know people are popping on at different times. And this is one of these nights that if, if I don't respond to your comment, it's because my mind, I'm just like, woo, let's go. So, <laughs> get distracted. So, um, but I mentioned earlier about obedience. That was from last week. You know, we lot, that is the key. I, I held this up acting like it's a key. That is the key to unlock all of these other things. Okay. Of hearing the voice of God. We must obey. If we're not going to obey his word, we're not going to get anywhere with the Lord. He leads us. Um, and he will not have us to do anything that would not draw us closer to him. And that would not bring him glory. Okay. If it contradicts, well, excuse me, contradicts the word of God. Um, it is not from him. If it contradicts the word of God. I remember a certain situation. I was seeking counsel about it. Um, you know, not just, just a woman of God. I wasn't like going to a counselor at the time. Um, actually, yeah, no. Um, but anyway, and I, I was really desiring some answers and they couldn't tell me what the Lord's will was for my life, but they did say this and it has stuck with me all these years. But they said, measure it by the word of God. Measure it by the word of God. What does the word say? Okay, is there anything in this situation that is contrary to the word of God? Is there anything that could pull you away from him? Is there anything that would take his glory away? Is there anything that would have the appearance of evil? Um, you know, measure it by the word of God. If you're confused, measure it by the word of God. God is not the author of confusion, so I wonder where that confusion is coming from. Okay, um, just search, search. Don't make any set of moves, okay? Uh, as you, you probably heard people say, whatever you're confused about, take some time, pause. I had somebody pouring in my life and said that over me years ago. Take a break from it all. If you're confused, if you don't know what to do, don't make any set of moves. Don't go ahead until you have the peace of God. Until you know that you know that you know that the Lord is leading you to take those steps forward. Because as you probably have learned as well as myself, when we go ahead without feeling that full peace from the Lord, it's going to get us into trouble. It's going to, oh, 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 and we're going to be begging for mercy. You know what I'm saying? Like, Lord, get me out of this thing and show me, give me wisdom how to get out. We're whining and stuff. Yep. Hey, hey. Oh, I did see Brenda's comment there. Measure. Yeah. Amen, sister. Yep. Yep. Amen. Um, yeah, let me, let me read some stuff. Okay. So she says here, if you've come to this study or maybe just to this video, if you're not actually having the book, it's fun. Um, if you've come to this study because God always seems difficult to hear, remind yourself of his intention. Trust his heart. He's not hiding from you. 
He's hiding for you. He is leaving traces of his glory and glimpses of his grace like breadcrumbs for you to follow. Remember, are important and intended to nourish you in a necessary way. Seeking is not worthless, but rather a valuable part of your journey. We need to continually... I thought my phone was going to cut off. That scared me. <laughs> Jesus, Lord. <laughs> Somebody pray over my phone. <laughs> but we need to continue, continually be seeking. Has Ashley always continually sought him in my Christian walk? I wish I could say I have. But sometimes it, it's easy to um, keep doing what, you know, naturally you do in the routine of things. And yet missing it because you're truly not seeking him from your heart. Okay. Uh, seeking, okay, I already said it. The process itself is a way in which God can and does speak to us, maturing, molding, and strengthening us for his purposes. Um, let's go on. Bear with me, if you will. I'm just trying to pick out some good stuff that I really feel will, will, will help. Um, there's, I mean, there's so many good things in here, you know. So, listen. I'm bad for this. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have been bad for this in my walk with the Lord, always seeking a sign. Anybody out there can relate? Always seeking a sign. Always hoping, hoping that somebody can read my mail, you know, or, or Lord, if you will make this happen so I know, you know, or, you know, just anything, anything, anything external, just seeking a sign that it's the Lord's will. Okay. We wear ourselves out, and in that, my friend, is how we become deceived when we're just seeking an external sign. He is merciful. Oh, my goodness. He, thank you, Lord. Um, he, he can confirm things through signs, external factors, okay? But let me tell you, let's look here at what is the most important thing that we do, Okay. I know if you're on here, I, I don't care what denomination you are. I don't care if you go to church at all, okay? You are welcome here. But I want to tell you, just because coming from a person who is Pentecostal, um, I've, I've been raised Pentecostal, you know, how I, I just Pentecostal. <laughs> anyway, um, and so Pentecostals, I, I, I love, I love me some Pentecostal brothers and sisters in the Lord. I'm not knocking anybody, okay? But I have seen a lot in there's things we can see a lot in every, any area, but I have personally witnessed a lot of this and done it myself. Depending on, depended on my feelings way too much. Being led by um, the feeling, the emotional side of things. I'm thankful that I can experience those feelings sometimes, you know? Um, like I said, I'm not knocking any of, that, but, any of that, but I have grown so much in the Lord. I wish that I could even... Um, it's like I feel the need to apologize to the people in my past uh, that had to see me so emotional in many times. But, but, um, but it goes much deeper than that. It goes much deeper than that. He's looking for us to be looking in his word. Okay? His word. My Bible is right there, but I'm... Okay, let's pretend... Even though my Bible's right there. In the bag. I have it in the bag. Let's pretend this is the word of God. Okay? This right here is the foundation. Okay? If this is the word of God... Um, I know it's just a book, but um, if, if this was the Word of God, this right here is the foundation for everything else to be built upon. The foundation, okay? And if we do have things that happen, you know, that we were praying about, that we can see or, or, or feel or, you know, whatever else. Thank, I mean, thank the Lord that He was merciful in sending us confirmation through external factors. But those external things, okay? The sensational things, the things that can be detected through the five uh, physical senses, those sensational things should never be based off of that alone. Okay? If it cannot be uh, stacked up on the foundation without crumbling, it, you know, it, it's, not, it's not from the Lord. Okay? We want to do things. He tells us to trust in Him with all our heart. Okay? Lean not on your own understanding. Okay, we we want something we can feel all the time, and I'm I'm a I'm I've been like I said I, that's been me a lot of times. 
but sometimes you just won't feel it, okay? He's looking for, in, in faithfulness, he's looking for obedience. That's the key, remember, that unlocks everything else to hear in his word. He's looking for faithfulness. Um, even honestly, can I be honest with you? I will, of course. <laughs> but my body, when I got out of church tonight, I felt like my body was just, I'd, I'd been up since, you know, before seven o'clock this morning and just, you know, and kind of mentally exhausted. But I said that I would get on here at 930, if possible, you know, if I could put the kids to bed. So I did that. I was a few minutes late because, you know, I already mentioned that at the beginning of the video. But I, I'm, I'm wanting to grow and our words mean something. Okay. Maybe somebody needs to hear that today. I'm not beating you down. I don't know even know who's all watching, but um, our words. People won't trust you if, if you constantly have excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse, okay? Um, people won't trust you. And so our words matter. Our words matter, okay? Um, God's looking for faithfulness. He's looking for obedience. And he, he wants those who are hungry after him, he, he wants to speak to us and, and he will. To those who are looking for him and actively listening okay you got to stop everything you're doing sometimes and just listen stop talking <laughs> you know stop looking to everybody else for advice and just listen for him okay get into his word and then things that you know you know you'd prayed about something and then it just starts and you know the lord is just stacking that up okay um he he desires to do that for us okay moving on all right praise the lord something that I, I was like blown away when I was reading this. Okay. Listen, every single person has a conscience. Let me get something out for you. Every, every person has a conscience. Okay. Everyone, even, even unsaved people. Okay. People that, um, don't really right now have a relationship with the Lord. Um, every single one of us have a conscience. And so, um, and, and, and it's, um, it's built, it is, what's the word I'm looking for, molded, I guess you could say, our conscience is molded um, by how we were raised, or the influences in our lives, the things that we have, um, you know, spent time um, learning about, or whatever, those things can be shaped uh, by all, all, so many, so many different factors there. Okay, um, but then there is the uh, the spirit. Let me show you something. I was going to hand these out at church tonight, but my plan didn't go the way I planned. Okay, so, um, but in this ain't, this ain't an Ashley thing. This was right from the book here. I'm not, I'm not trying to take credit for anything. That's not my idea. Um, but she has this illustration here in the book. Okay, so we're made up of these things. I don't know... I almost fear that that's turned the opposite direction since I'm live. But anyway, I'll just tell you. This says spirit, okay? We got these different sections. The spirit, the soul, and the body, okay? So the spirit of God. Or I'm sorry, we, we each have a spirit. A, a human, like a, a human spirit is a facet of humanity is what it says here. And when we become a new creature, though, the spirit of God um, it takes over that human spirit, you know? Um, so, and then the soul is made up of the mind, the will, the emotions, and the conscience, okay? And then there's the body. So, uh, there's so much in here that I wish I could unpack, but I will not have the time to do that. But what I found to be just so intriguing is that, listen, I remember uh, somebody I look up to highly. I had, um, was a, a pastor, um, I had reached out to his wife about a certain thing and it had bothered me so long. I'm like, is it, I just want to know, I'm not trying to be petty or trying to be, you know, uh, uh, worldly, carnally minded or even qu ask questions that don't matter. But truly this has been weighing on me. And I asked her, I said, can you give me some scripture? Can, can you tell me, is this wrong to do this? Can you tell me, is this wrong? Because I, I feel better, like, you know, in a certain area whenever I'm able to, whatever, so I could go into all that. But 
So she gave me so many good things. And one of the things she said was that in the garden, Adam and Eve, God told him one thing, but then he really laid the message and added to it. Uh, and, and so, <clears throat> but what I wanted to say with that, <coughs> excuse me, is that um, her husband, the pastor, <coughs> <coughs> the pastor he told me later on he was so glad that I reached out to her about that and he said yeah, I've never forgot this he said sis our conscience isn't always right that I was floored I was like what like because listen the, the Bible teaches us i mean there are so many scriptures i was writing them down last night actually but i don't have them in front of me but there's so many scriptures about the conscience um you know and like our conscience can be seared and stuff Ooh, as i'm on that a conscience listen to this listen to this okay in, in the book it actually gives you scriptures to go to for this but listen a conscience can be blameless clear corrupted defiled, ooh, um, evil, good, guilty, seared, and weak. Those are some things that she listed there with scripture to back it up. Okay. Um, I don't have time to unload all that either, but so there's good and bad things that can come from our conscience. Okay. Our conscience isn't always right. Um, you know, think about it. Are there things in your life that you, th you just, your conscience, like you feel you almost think it's a conviction, like, but it's maybe because of, uh, you've been around a certain group of people that have just hammered it into you. I will tell you, um, when you come from a very legalistic, um, background, um, I've been around a lot of, in my past, um, now I'm not saying that all these people that would look a certain way is legalistic, okay? I'm not at all saying that. Um, but I do want to say, um, that there were people. I'm telling you, I walked in a church one night. I was visiting. And people turned around and looked right at me. And I tell you, I was excited for church. I was excited to visit. I was like, ooh, I was expecting from the Lord, you know. I was like, I mean, I was ready to go. But somebody turned around. Well, a lot of people did. But one person whispered loudly, she's trimmed her hair. And asked if, I, I think, I'm pretty sure they asked somebody beside of them if I was saved. Like, they, they knew who I was, but they could not believe that I trimmed my hair. And, like, I was, I was blown away. And now, and I, I don't mean this at all wrong, but that same person, I would never have wished this on them. That same person, y'all, is living in a very, they're, they're living a lifestyle of sin. And that grieves my heart for them. Okay, well, there have been so many comments made to me. I have been told that I'm worldly. I've been told so many things. You know, I told that I'm going to hell for splitting my skirt. Not from people that were really close to me, of course. And But so many things. I was called a transgressor. Um, so you, some people say, you don't have to explain yourself. Quit, you know, posting stuff like that. And of course, people chatter, you know how they do. But I'm like, you don't understand. I'm saying this because I know how it is to feel bound by standards from people that did not come from God. I know. And so when I share stuff, you might think I'm sharing too much, my friend. But listen, I, I do release some things. And I'm not right on everything, I will tell you. But if I'm saying something, it's because I am. I, I feel like almost protective over other people. I'm like, don't you dare come at my sister with that junk. Don't you dare make her feel like she is not good enough or not spiritual enough. Don't you dare come at my sister like that. I just, it's like this, <laughs> this, this, this holy anger almost like rises up inside of me and I feel protective and I'm like, all right, I'm going to put myself out there even though I know people are going to talk, but because I'm reaching to help somebody. All right. And, ooh, I feel that all over me. My goodness. My goodness. Shoo, mm -mm. don't let anybody tell you that you are not right with the Lord just because you don't meet certain standards. My God, help us. <laughs> um, mm -mm. Let him, he's the righteous judge. Oh my gosh, he will lead us into all truth. His spirit, mm, his spirit will lead us into all truth. That's good stuff.
Mm -mm. My Lord. On the other side of that, let me say this. <laughs> let me say this because I have also, I will take responsibility. I have also said things sometimes to people. Trying because I felt so convicted about a certain area. And I thought, I just thought it was time to release it to everybody else. And, you know, sometimes you think that when God tells you something, that that must mean everybody needs to, to do what he told you to do or not do, you know. And so you're trying to put that burden on everybody else. There are some things that's not, it, it's black or white in the Bible. But then there are some things that's personal convictions. And, you know, I won't go into all that. But um, so I have unloaded some things to people and put a load on them um, that was not from the Lord. And I wish I could go back and tell every single person I'm sorry, but I couldn't I couldn't keep up with that. I, I don't even know how to do that. But um, So it's kind of humiliating, but we learn from those things, okay? And uh, so with that being said, I am so thankful for the people that I even unloaded those things to that still love me, and they've been patient with me, and they didn't just give up on me and throw me away. So I want to tell you something. I know sometimes we can feel like we're defending ourselves and preach it, you know, all this stuff. But I also want to come back and pull ourselves back and think, maybe, just maybe, what, you know, I don't know. They might be un un unmovable. They might not budge at all. But the Lord might deal with their heart too. Let's pray for those people that, that you know, make us feel certain ways. We can pray for them and, and just pray that God will... Um, humble them and open their eyes and allow them to feel his love and not bondage his spirit does not bring bondage okay his spirit frees us he does he does not bring us bondage uh-uh <laughs> sorry I, you can tell when i start probably feeling passionate about something so praise the good lord that's good stuff right there and i ain't saying that about good job ashley i just mean all that stuff i know those things i'm thankful that the lord has taught me that stuff you know and I'm just I'm all I'm like Lord speak speak it Lord okay if you've got a pen and a pencil y'all y'all are making me I'm, I'm gonna take off running <laughs> I'm gonna run you're like in a good way like y'all sending those hearts and stuff if you've got a pen and a pencil or a pen you know um you may want to write these down okay this is some good stuff right here that she she uh lists for us okay whoo this is good the five m's as in mary the five M's of correctly hearing God. So good. I'm just going to read it straight out, okay? I'm going to assume that you don't have the book. I'm going to read it and take you some notes. Okay, number one. Look for the message of the Spirit. Look for the message of the Spirit. And Okay, so here we go. We're going to intentionally listen. I'm still on number one, okay? I'll let you know when we go to number two. Intentionally listen. Be still. And consciously turn your attention inward to see if what you're sensing carries the weight of God or is simply the fleeting, unsteady voice of your own emotions. Ooh, that's good stuff. Don't just casually ask God for guidance. Discernment like this takes time and patience and practice. Okay? If you're going to be good at anything, you got to practice, right? I remember when I used to play softball. Practice, 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 practice. You know, if you're going to be good, and thank the good Lord, we won every game that last year I played. Anyway, <laughs> but practice, you know, it makes a difference. So we got to practice these things. Okay, number two, live in the mode of prayer. Brenda, I'm so glad that you are writing that stuff down in the comments. Live in the mode of prayer. Don't talk to others about anything more than you talk to God about it. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Submit anything you think you're hearing from him back to him in prayer. Okay, Lord, I kind of sense that this is what you're saying. I sense that this is the way you're leading me. But, you know, just just continue. In, uh, one, let me insert this real quick. He is persistent. He is persistent. Uh, she even brings that out in this, this study. He is persistent. He don't quit chasing after us. He don't give up on us if we, you know, kind of step over here and we shouldn't have, you know, he's patient and he is persistent. He will continue to chase us. Um, thankful for that. As long as we sincerely want to do as well. Um, okay. Uh, stop worrying about stuff. When the issue comes into your mind throughout the day, don't waste time worrying. There's a song that's like, if you prayed about it, 
don't worry about it, you know, whatever. Instead, spend your time handing the issue over to God. Okay, number three, y'all ready for this? Number three. Okay, so first of all, the number one was message. Look for the message of the Spirit. Number two is live in the mode of prayer. Number three, search out the model of Scripture. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and re read what she has here for us. Carefully consider what the Bible says. Dig into the Word and find out. Okay? You say, well, I can understand it. Keep trying. Keep trying. Okay, ask Him for wisdom and just keep seeking. I'm telling you, He will illuminate the Scripture for you. Um, does what you think you're hearing contradict the character of God or his word in any way? If it does, guess what? You're not hearing God correctly, which I, I did mention that earlier. Okay, so number four. We're going to go on to number four. Submit to the ministry of Eli. We need some wise counsel up in here. Not just anybody. Just as this priest of Israel provided young Samuel with insight as to how to recognize the voice of God, seek the counsel of a wise, more mature believer who has practiced in discerning God's voice in his or her own life. Listen, oh my goodness, we have got to be careful. We, we especially, we can almost manipulate the situation to serve us, okay? In Without people being aware. We, we, if we're not careful, we will put other people in a situation to where they have to speak over our lives what we really want to hear. Yeah. And even on social media, we are quick to share things. I actually said this last week. I won't stay on here long about this. But we are quick to share things if it goes along with um, our desires and our agenda, right? Well, um, we need wise counsel. People who have not only talked the talk, but walked the walk. People who aren't living in defeat every day of their life. People who are um, uh, other people respect and trust. Um, they're, they're, they, they've got credibility. Okay? Um, they've, 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 they've shared some experiences with the Lord. You know? We need to, if you're needing some wise counsel, it needs to be somebody, a more mature believer than yourself. Okay? We all have room to grow. I've got people in my life that I... I I'm very careful, I guess you could say, who I allow to speak over me. Used to, used to I was just looking for any word. Um, not that I've arrived on that either, but I'm just trying to be more careful with those things. Okay, so, and, and you know, the Lord will, if you ask Him, He will direct you to the people that will speak into you, okay? And, and it helps show you, and it doesn't always feel good ooh, to be told um, what needs to be told, but... But learn from it. Be teachable. Be teachable. Um, that's one thing. We will not get anywhere if we are not teachable. You know what? If we are so puffed up in pride. Well, I know that. You know, things like that. If we're so puffed up and, well, you don't have to tell me. Gosh, okay. Okay. I, I, I kind of am guilty in that area with my husband sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, you don't have to say that to me. How do you know? You know, and um, anyway. We all have work to work to do and have places to grow, areas to grow in. But um, but anyway, um, he I believe though he will he will put those people in our life that will speak over us and into our lives, give us wisdom. Okay, so let me recap real quick. So number one was look for the message. This is the five M's: message of the Spirit, live in the mode of prayer, search out the model of Scripture. You got to open that word up. Don't let anything contradict it or it's not his voice. Submit to the ministry of Eli. Okay, and number five, expect the mercy of confirmation. Ask the Lord to confirm his eternal word with external evidence. He desires for you to know his will. He's not hiding it from you. He's not trying to be mean. <laughs> he loves us. He will graciously verify his message through his word, through circumstances, or even through another person. Okay, I have many, um, I was talking earlier, I said, you know, don't, don't depend on signs, because I've been guilty of that a lot in my spiritual walk with the Lord, um, but we've got to come to a place where we grow in Him, where we know we've got to measure it all by the Word of God, and, and then uh, the mercy of confirmation, if He so chooses uh, to use um, external evidence, okay, to say, all right, this is, this is, you know, He can do it, I promise you, He can. He can do it. Um, 
because he's done it so many times for me. And that's, that's what's led me here even to this study, okay? Um, because he was speaking to me. He, he was already dealing with me about some things through his word and then through prayer and just, just, I just sensed it. I sensed it, you know, and then there was somebody that actually spoke into my life about something. And I was like, okay, it's like all of these things. It's like, he was just stacking it up, you know, and leading me. And I, and I actually, you know, I mentioned how I left, um, I left my job and that was a hard decision, you know, but it, it, let me tell you, can I encourage you right now? When I, I told you earlier, let's pretend this is a key and that obedience is the key that unlocks everything to hearing the voice of God. <laughs> I could, I could just take me a praise break right now. Um, but when I listened to what he, um, he was speaking to me, even though it was hard. And I was like, there was turmoil going on in, in my heart and in my mind. I was, I was, I was, uh, uh warring so intensely because I'm like, God, I, I don't know. Should I do this? I was wearing myself out so many areas, you know? And when I finally just said, okay, God, I don't know what is going to happen. I don't know what your plan for me is. I don't know at all. What's, what's about, you know, I, I didn't have any answers. But when I obeyed, when I said yes, because I, I felt, you know, the Lord, it's like he spoke to me and it, saying, if you take this step, I will unfold the rest for you. I shared that several videos back, I think, but, um, and, and I'm like, okay, I, I didn't immediately, I wish I would have immediately, you know, listened, but I was, I was waiting on those things to all line up, you know, and, and God's timing is perfect. But, um, anyway, and so, um, but he did he's he's unfolding i still don't know what the future holds but i will tell you this i want this is what i wanted to say hey this is a gate right here okay this is the gate and there's a big old lock on it all right and if he tells us to do something he, he's dealing with us about a certain area you stick that key of obedience in there okay and once you put that key in there i'm telling you what it's gonna woo <laughs> that gate is gonna swing wide open for you okay when you, hallelujah, that is awesome. I'm telling you, I, I know this, not, not even from years ago. This is, yes, years ago too, but this is just recently, okay? And this is why I'm, I'm even doing this. <laughs> I could just, mm, praise the Lord. Um, you, don't, you don't know my story, y'all. Um, but when I stepped out into the unknown, oh, I was praying earlier and listening to that song, Oceans, um, you know, anyway, spirit lead me where my trust is without borders. Oh, goodness, my Lord. Um, but when I stepped out into the unknown, it he has been guiding my steps. It, so many things. He's using people. He's using, of course, his word. He's using um, just so many um, uh, circumstances, things lining up with what he spoke to my heart, in my heart to do. He will bless. You might not see the reward. You might not see on the other side of that, but he will bless. His spirit, like I said, will not lead us to do anything that's going to take him from him. Mm -mm. Okay, even y'all, even relationships and stuff like that. Uh uh. Stop trying to make somebody be something that they're not. Okay? Stop trying to, to, you, I know you want a leader. I know we need a leader. We need a leader. And I, I'm talking to actually right now to single people. Stop trying to to persuade yourself that, okay, well, it's okay. He'll, he'll grow. He'll grow. I know everybody's got a different story and I'm not, I am not the voice of God speaking his will over your life right now. So I don't know your story and everything that's tied into it. So don't be careful before you make any sudden decisions and break things off. But I will say, um, if you are constantly feeling that weight of, you know, I just wish that they're just, it's like a weight to you, you know, they're, they're, they're not, they're not a good spiritual leader and you want more than that, you know? And, uh, there are some things I'm not, when we have a list of things, we might not get every single thing on that list, you know, like down to the very, um, you know, well, I didn't want them to have a, a freckle on their arm. You know, I, that's silly, but I'm just saying we are so specific. Sometimes God knows what we need. Okay. And what you don't need though, is to have a weight on you. I don't know why I'm speaking that, but I'm just believing that's for somebody out there today, um, tonight. <laughs> um, you don't need that weight on you, sister, okay? Um, you need a leader, somebody who knows who they are in the Lord, because you're trying to grow. You ain't trying to take steps back. You're trying to grow. 
okay? And not just relationships like a, a, a significant other, can you talk? Um, but friendships. You're trying to grow. Sometimes, I said it last week, but sometimes you're trying to grow and you're going to have to let them go, okay? In, a, in the right way and love and things like that. But you're going to have to let some things go and some people go because they're holding you back. Okay, they've got the mindsets that you had from your past. You don't need that for this next place you're going into. Okay, all right. Just we got to be very mindful. Yeah, we want to grow. We well, we've got to start doing inventory. You know what I mean on our lives. Um. So, okay. Um. Well, let me not go there. I'm probably about to wrap this up. I've I have I have enjoyed being on here. Um. This actually, you know, I've, I've went by this more than I did at church earlier. But I just trust that the Lord knows what he's doing, you know. I'm learning from it. Um, let me make sure before I do wrap this up. Okay. Okay, let, let me say this. If we wish to change, it starts with the inside, not the outside. Okay? You can fool people all day long. Okay? You can wear certain things. Be a certain way. You can you can carry your Bible everywhere you go, but if you don't got it on the inside, mm -mm, it's got to start on the inside. A lasting change, okay? Um, uh, you know, so when you think about your your mind, your eyes, your hands, your mouth, ears, feet. Um, like where you go, what you listen to, what you say, what you do, what you see, what you think about. All of these things are internal, and we got to work on these things. we got to allow the Spirit of God to work on us from the inside out, okay? And once we get it right in here, it'll show our, our um, you know, the, 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 the fruit of the Spirit will be evident, you know? And He loves us and, and wants us to grow. He wants to lead us into all truth. Okay? He's that's what his will is. And um so so let me just say whatever level you find yourself on tonight, today, I don't know whatever a time you're watching this right now, whatever level you are on, maybe you feel like so behind. Maybe you listen, let right now, let's cast all this stuff aside. If you're thinking you know, I, I, having regret. If I wouldn't have wasted so much time, I could be so much further along. Okay, nah, we ain't doing that. No, nah, right now, let me speak this over you right now. We ain't doing that, okay? We're going to cast that stuff out. The past is in the past, okay? You can't get that time back. I understand. I, I, I totally understand um, how you feel, all right? But all that stuff, today is a fresh start if you... This is what it all boils down to. If you have a heart that desires more of the Lord, he has the heart to give you more of him. That's his will. That's his desire. And um, he, will, he will send his spirit to guide you into all truth. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Okay? We're tossing everything else out. Matthew 6, says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things shall be added unto you. Okay? You're looking for balance. I know from experience. You're trying to balance everything. And you get unbalanced. And you're trying to focus on one area. And you you, you find that you're neglecting another area. And gosh, the Lord revealed that to me this past year. And it, it's frustrating. Because you're, you're trying. You're like, Lord, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. But I can't get it right. <laughs> you know? I, I can't seem to get myself together in all these areas. Okay. S just... Just chill out, Ashley, chill out, <laughs> all of us. Let's chill out for a minute. Okay, stop trying to stop trying so hard in yourself, okay? And what you need to do, everything else has got to go. What you need to do is what that scripture right there that I just said, that's what you need to do. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, okay? Stop Stop looking for things that's going to make you happy or that's going to ease your frustration. You know, that's finally going to help you feel like you've arrived. Stop looking for all those things. Look for Him. Seek Him, not just His hand, but seek His face. Seek His kingdom. Yeah, that's right. That's right, Brenda. <laughs> chill out, Bren. Yeah, chill out. Um, seek His face. 
and, and you know, turn you on some worship music and, and just go into, go into prayer, wherever it's your car or your closet, your bedroom, wherever you're at. If you're washing the dishes, turn you on some music and start saying, all right, Lord, you know, maybe you don't know where to start praying, but just start, just talk to the Lord. Lord, I need you to give me a desire for a desire, a desire. Lord, um, God, show me the areas that I need to, I, I need your help, Lord. But most of all, Father, everything in my life that is not aligned with you, we're going to do an alignment. Bring your vehicle into the garage. We're going to do an alignment, okay? Your spiritual vehicle, we're, we're going to let the Lord do the alignment. And anything that does not line up with his plan, okay, which is further in the kingdom of God, even even religious activities doesn't necessarily mean you're 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 furthering the kingdom of God. Okay, we can do that all day long and not have our hearts in the right place. Okay, and be ineffective, but but we gotta we gotta seek Him first. I'm thankful that He gives us another chance to do that. Okay, if we feel like we failed in the past, and we have every one of us. Um, seek him get your eyes stop thinking about all this stuff in your life that you can't even control stop put throw away all the anger and all the regret and all the guilt and the shame that you have allowed yourself to carry for all this time whether you place it on yourself or somebody else did and then you continue to carry that all that stuff get it off take that baggage throw it out the door don't even donate it to goodwill go burn it <laughs> okay but anyway we're gonna get rid of all that and we're going to start shifting our focus back to the Lord. Lord, there, there's obviously something here, God. I, I've, I've become this person that I don't really like. And so, Lord, there is, I know, Father, I, I'm going to start believing. That, that I'm, let's pray that. I'm going to start believing, Lord, once again, that you do have a purpose and a plan for my life as an individual. I know you have a plan for the body of Christ, but you have a plan for me in that body, Lord. And, and so, Lord, I pray right now for your eyes. Let me see through your eyes. I, I get frustrated and I get, I'm insecure sometimes, God. And I don't, I don't want to look through the lens of my flesh. Let me see through your eyes how you see me. God, I don't have to understand everything right now. But if you will lead me even right now, this, the next step, pray that prayer. Lord, I, Lord, I want to please you. Okay? He's not out, listen, he's not out to make us happy, okay? He's out, y'all have seen it, I'm sure, that thing that says, you know, he's out, he, he wants to make us holy, okay? He's not, he's not trying to get you in your comfort zone. He's trying to make you holy, okay? And so, count it a blessing when he begins to show you things in your life that makes you cringe about yourself. So, you know, it's a blessing that he loves us and is willing not just just he don't throw us to the side but he shows us these things so we can turn it over to jesus and he will work it out now like that song says he will he will that habit that i had mm, just couldn't seem to break i prayed and i prayed I, I don't remember all the words of that but that problem that i had i couldn't seem to solve I tried and I tried, but i kept getting deeper involved but then i turned it over to jesus and i stopped worrying about it amen Okay, turn it over to the Lord. So we're shifting our focus. I'm about to end. We're shifting our focus to Him. It's not about what makes us happy, but it's about what makes us holy to do His will. And uh, so anyway, there, there's so many good things in that study, y'all. Um, of course, I went off on my own style of things as well, but uh, maybe we'll share some next week. Now listen, this 9.30 at night stuff, um, I, I, I didn't know I was going to start doing this. Lord willing, I'll be back on next, next, uh, week, but I may either try to do it Wednesday through the day or possibly Thursday through the day. Um, because it's, it's really tough at, at night trying to come home from church and all those things, you know? Um, so anyway, but all right, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for loving us and teaching us. Thank you for your spirit that will guide us into all truth. Lord, thank you for loving us and, uh, and, and leading us. Lord, we thank you, Father, for showing us the things that we need to, 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 to be shown in order to grow 
closer to you because that is your will for us to get closer to you. Nothing else matters. All else is vanity, God. We got to get close to you. We got to be ready for you and, and, and just to be um, used by you, Lord, that you could flow freely through us, Lord. I pray for my sisters tonight. Lord, I pray for a sound mind. I pray for clarity. I pray for passion. Yes, hallelujah. I pray for encouragement. I pray that you will give them the strength to lay everything down that would hinder them from uh, getting closer to you, Jesus. Lord, and we just thank you. We thank you for your spirit that so kindly and persistently draws us to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I love you all, and I'm going to sign off for the night.